um, Monday, every fraction that you see in your life has to be what? Reduced to lowest terms. So at this point, what would you do? You'd have to reduce. Start with factor trees for 755. Factor trees for 3,430. Factor trees for both of these. You guys with me on this? OK. My advice to you, though, is you see what's in blue? Don't do what's in blue. You want to know why? Stop and think. If you had to do factor trees for 755, isn't it true that you can start with 35 times what? 15. If you had to do a factor tree for 3430, isn't it true you can start with 70 times 49? So this here, which you see, which you multiplied, is where you actually would possibly start when you use the factor tree. 75 is wrong too, OK. 525? Okay. OK, five, thank you. 525. All right, well, same, same idea. Good. Even better, I'm going to say to you, don't multiply them. What I'm going to say to you is this. <clears throat> Break down these numbers by factor trees, or prime factorization. 35, how do you write 35? 7 times 5. Good. Don't forget times. How do you break 15 down? 3 times 5. Isn't this what you'd have to do anyway? Right? You'd say here, oh, 7 times 5, 15, 3 times 5. You'd have to do this anyway. So what I'm saying is don't even multiply. Symbolically multiply and break down these numbers by factor trees. They should be a lot easier to break down. How do you break 70 down? Seven times it could be 7 times 10, or 7 times 5 times 2. You're right. How do you break 49 down? 7 times what? 7. Seven. And so when I say to you, if you know how to simplify fractions, what we worked on Monday, you can also multiply fractions because in the end they need to be simplified always now what do you use here cancellation okay good what goes away seven, seven. what else five what else that's it circle what's left so what's left what do you get what's on top three times five is 15. What's 2 times 7 times 7? 98. Is that 98? Mm -hmm. 15 over 98. This, ladies and gentlemen, it may not look like it, but this is reduced to lowest terms. You can sell the farm. You can bet the farm this is reduced to lowest terms. Okay, you're done with that reduction. So you're done really even with just multiplying your two fractions together. Okay, you guys okay with that? You're going to be responsible for multiplying even fractions together accurately. Answers always have to be simplified. OK, you with me on this? OK. This idea can be extended not just to uh, multiplying two fractions together. You can multiply what? Three fractions. <coughs> you could multiply something like, oh, let's see, 11 over 35. 15 over 33, 9 over 25. Okay? So you guys know now what is it that you really do when you multiply fractions together? You multiply the corresponding numerators, right? Which is 11 times 15 times 9. You divide by the product of the denominators. 35 times 33 times 25. But really, do not break these things down, OK? You don't break them down. What do you do instead? 
sorry, I got that wrong. You don't multiply them. What do you do instead? You break them down. <laughs> so I'm on autopilot. Okay. Can you break 11 down? No. No, no why not? Because it's prime. Can you break 15 down? Yes. How? Three times five. Three times five. Can you break nine down? Yes. Three times three. 35, you know, is five times seven. 33 is three times 11. 25 is five times what? Five. So ladies and gentlemen, we factored everything. Use the cancellation property and what do you get? 11 goes away. Does three go away? Yes. Sure. A five, yeah. Does it matter what five you cancel? Does that have to be the one on the left? No. no. What about this three? Does it, another three down here? No. Three? No. So do you guys see how it's kind of a good idea to circle what's left? I circle because I might forget that seven mm -hmm. was never canceled. So I always go back and check. Final answer. What's the numerator? Nine. What's the denominator? What's seven times 25? Is it 175? And what do you guys notice? Some of you guys might convince yourself that that's not reduced, but it is. It's reduced because you can't cancel anything further. So you can, again, bet the farm that this is reduced to lowest terms. Notice the following. I did talk a little bit about this on Monday, right? Beginning algebra, doing algebra. If you're going to be successful with algebra, what is the assumption that you can do? Remember? Arithmetic. Arithmetic. So if you're reaching for the calculator to find, you know, what numbers multiplied together is 35, that calculator is going to get in the way. Is that right? Because notice, you have, if you're doing that for each one of these numbers, that calculator gets in the way, and sooner or later, you lose all essence of what you're doing. So, so it is a requirement that you can do some of the arithmetic. You know, know the times tables very intimately before you can even do algebra. Because we haven't even done algebra. We're just simplifying fractions. Um, this technique that I'm showing you here is the technique that, you know, once upon a time when I was a student, it's true. I used to look at these, try to simplify them, um, by what's known as staring. Some people try to stare at them and they say, well, numbers come out of this stuff. <laughs> like you have 84 and 212. Some people stare at that for a while and conclude, ah, 4 comes out of both. Maybe it does. But, you know, having something to do, an algorithm, since I was taught this algorithm, I no longer stare at what I'm seeing and try to find some, the largest number that comes out of both of these numbers. Instead, it gives you something to do, breaking down these numbers, and your accuracy, after practicing this over and over again, your accuracy will be you know, enough so that you actually pass.